Okay, this is the lecture video for Mac 1114 Trigonometry. We're in section 7.6 where we're going to be using double angle and half angle formulas. And these formulas, like the formulas in the previous section, are here to assist you when you are trying to find exact trig values for angles that are not either 30, 45, or 60. But what these formulas do, just like the previous section, is they help you relate the kind of angles that you're being given, like 105 degrees, 75 degrees, or even decimal type angles. And it helps you relate those kind of angles to the 30, 60, or 45 uh, special right triangles. So let's get started. I'll introduce you first to the double angle uh, formulas. If you are looking for cosine of a double angle and they just happen to be using a to signify the angle instead of theta so this just says cosine of a double angle can be um, found by expanding that double angle using this identity and you, you're being told that these are all identities so in other words you're being told that this is equivalent to this so if you are asked to find cosine of a double angle you can expand it like this, cosine squared, so that you are just finding cosine of A, but then squaring it, minus sine of A, but then squaring it, so that you're not really working with the double angle, but yet you're getting an answer that's equivalent to it by using this identity. There are several formulas, as you might notice right here, for finding cosine of a double angle. You may use any one of the three when you're doing a a calculational type problem. However, when you're doing an identity, one might be more beneficial than the other. So here's another way that you can find cosine of a double angle. Just 1 minus 2 sine of A squared. A uh, third way that you can find cosine of a double angle is 2 times cosine of A squared, where just the cosine of A is being squared, not this 2 out here, minus 1. Sine of a double angle is a pretty easy formula. It's just 2 times sine of the angle times cosine of the angle. Notice that on the right side, all of these identities, which are equal to double angle, is um, you're using them in their non, they're just, you're in their non-doubled form. So that's how the expansion takes care of you being able to find a, a sine or a cosine for a double angle. If you happen to be finding a tan of a double angle, those will involve the most algebraic work as they have in all the sections. The, the formula for the tans always require just a little bit more. If you can't see this line, this is a fraction. This says 2 times tan of A. When you're being asked to find a double angle, we'll play the, rule, the role of the numerator and 1 min minus tan of A, but squared will play the role of the denominator. Okay, you also have half angle formulas. And you're being told that this is identical to this. So if you're being asked to um, work with half angles, this is one way you can get it. And I'll be going into specific detail as to how you pick plus or minus. Right now, I'm just going to make a comment that unlike the quadratic formula, the, with these formulas, you need to choose one or the other based on certain parameters in the problem. You choo choose to either use the positive version of this formula or the negative, not both. And a lot of students think that because they've seen this plus or minus when they've used the quadratic formula. So they report both answers and end up getting it wrong. So I'll be going over in detail how you make that choice in each problem. It will be specific to the problem. So cosine of a half angle, you'll pick either the plus or the minus. Likewise, whenever you see a plus or a minus, you will choose one or the other. So it says that it is the square root of 1 plus cosine of the angle that you're cutting in half divided by 2. Sine of a half angle, you'll pick one of these and then it'll be 1 minus the cosine rather than 1 plus the cosine of the angle that you're cutting in half divided by 2. So if let's say that you're doing 
I don't know, it can be any angle that you have here that you are cutting in half in order to create uh, some decimal angle that they gave you. Whatever you have here in your numerator, that's what's going to go here. Likewise in all these formulas. Tan of uh, any angle cut in half, that'll be inside the radical. You're still going to choose either the plus or the minus, one or the other. And it'll be 1 minus cosine of the angle you're cutting in half right here. Whatever is here, you'll place it here. And then 1 plus cosine of that same angle on the bottom. Okay, here is one uh, version. Here's another version of tan of a half angle that doesn't have a radical at all. And you don't have to choose the plus or the minus. I rather use one of these when given the choice because... Students can make mistakes just in picking the plus or the minus and then forget what you do for the rest of the problem. It gets marked wrong. So you might want to use these when given the opportunity. So tan of a half angle, it is sine of the angle that you were cutting in half. This one right here over 1 plus cosine. And here's another version of tan of half angle. 1 minus cosine of the angle you're cutting in half over sine of the angle you're cutting in half. Okay, so let's get started with doing the calculations. Okay, so in the first problem, now this is really going to tie in everything um, that you've learned in previous sections as well. Make, make sure you're making nice, clear drawings so that you can show everything um, that you need for all the parts of the problem. We're being asked to find sine of a double angle, cosine of a double angle, sine of a half angle, cosine of a half angle. So first thing you need to do is draw. Just like in the last section, there were several problems where they tell you where to spin to. So this says spin between zero and pi over two. So I'm gonna put my picture over here. This is zero. This is pi over two. And I'm spinning between zero and pi over two. So that's right in here. The spinning arm is, as it always is, your hypotenuse. So I have spun, kept myself between 0 and pi over 2, come down to the nearest x-axis, close that triangle. Go put the numbers on the triangle, as you have done in previous sections, based on the definition for this value. Sine is defined as y over r. So we're going to put the 5 in the y position, which is always the vertical leg. We're going to put the 8 in the r position, which is the hypotenuse. Okay, this plays the role of the y. This plays the role of the x, which we don't have. So we're going to go find it by Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to do a little bit of work right above the triangle so I can get that missing side that I may need as I use the formulas for double and half angle. So that Pythagorean theorem goes hypotenuse squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared. Okay, this is 64. This is 25. You want to get x squared, so you're going to subtract 25 on both sides. You can just show it with this arrow right here, showing that the 25 came over here and appeared as a negative 25 and is now gone from this side. So right now I have x squared is equal to um, 64 minus 25. 64 minus 25, which is 39. So 39 is equal to x squared. Then you're going to take the square root, take the square root. You're going to have lots of double square roots in this problem. So that'll evolve as I start to do the answer. So this x value here is square root of 39. So x is square root of 39, y is 5, and the r value, the hypotenuse, is 8. Okay, so now we go on with our problems, and we're going to find sine of a double angle. We're going to go grab the formula up above and start plugging in the values. 
Okay, give me one second. Okay, so, so sign, this is part A. And you can use this picture for all parts of the problem. So sine of a double angle, that's noted right here. Sine of a double angle, 2 times sine of A times cosine of A. So I'll write the formulas out each time, and so should you, so that you have a chance to memorize them. So this will be 2 times sine of the angle that got doubled times cosine of the angle that was doubled. The theta is the angle being doubled. Okay, and then just start plugging into that. So it's 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. And remember, sine of theta is y over r, and cosine of theta is x over r. And you get those values right off of your triangle that you created. So uh, y over r. They gave you that right here to start the problem off, but you can also look at the triangle. It's 5 over 8. Okay, then when you come over here and do x over r, that's the value that you found, and that would be square root of 39 over 8. Okay, and then just keep going with that. So this 2 that's out front is the same thing as 2 over 1, so you realize that's in the numerator and therefore gets multiplied by all the other numerator values. So in this problem, you're going to be multiplying 2 times 5, that's 10, and then there's a square root of 39 also in the numerator. So all three of those things get multiplied together. Then on the bottom, you have 1 times 8 times 8, 64. Okay, as soon as you do that, you can get your calculator to help you reduce the divide or just reduce on your own. You would only put these coefficients in your calculator, 10 divided by 64, and instead of pressing enter, hit math in the first column, third key down, enter, enter. And you get 5 over 32 for the reduced version of this first answer in part A. Same thing as 5 over 32, and that's because 2 goes into the top and the bottom with that radical in the top. Okay, that's your answer for part A. Okay, part B. Part B, you're being asked for cosine of a double angle, and you have several choices as to which one you're going to use when you go to do cosine um, of a double angle. So here are your choices up here. You can go cosine of a squared, sine of a squ squared with a minus in between, or you can use this one, or you can use this one. That's up to you. I'm going to use 2 cosine squared minus 1. Okay, we'll just use different ones each time. So I plan to use this, 2 cosine squared theta, minus 1, come down this way a little bit. So what this means is that you want cosine of theta right here, same thing as x over r, and then you're going to square it. You're going to take the cosine of theta, then square it. Okay, so cosine of theta is nothing more than x over r. That would be square root of 39 over 8. Okay, so it's 2. When you square this, you're squaring this top, which is makes the square root go away, and you're also squaring the bottom, which gives you 64. And then you're going to subtract 1. Okay, if you go a little bit further with this, this is going to be 2 times 39. And you can just put it all in your calculator if you want to, and then hit math, enter, enter at the end. So it could just be 2 times 39 divided by 64. Close that up. Subtract 1. Hit math. Enter. Enter. These directions call for exact values, so you're using fractions or radicals. Do not give decimal answers. They will not be exact, and therefore they'll be marked wrong. So 
7 over 32 is what you end up here. You have no radicals. So this is equal to 7 over 32 for your final answer. Okay, then part C. Part C, we're looking for sine of a half angle. Okay, sine of a half angle. Here's the formula, the one and only formula that you have, but you do have to make a choice here between should I use plus or should I use minus. So here's how you're going to be able to figure this out. I'm going to come off to the side and demonstrate for you how you pick whether it's the plus or the minus. Okay, so we don't actually know the theta. However, we did begin with this information that theta is between um, 0 and pi over 2. And we actually spun in between 0 and pi over 2 to create our picture. But now we're addressing um, a problem where theta is unknown, but we do want to get the half angle. So what you can do is manipulate this uh, domain that they gave you. Create a half angle there, and if you're going to cut the theta in half, then you have to divide everything by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 half, which would work nicely whenever you're dealing with a fraction. And trying to cut that in half, just write it as uh, multiplying by 1 half. Here we can just actually divide by 2 because that's not a fraction. Okay, so we have half an angle now in the middle. We have pi over 4 right here. And we have a zero right here. So look what this is saying to you because we are trying to do the sine value for half a theta. This says that half of theta is between zero and pi over four. When you're between zero and pi over four, that means you're in quad one. Because pi over two is at 90 degrees. This comes before that. So you are in quad one. And when you're in quad one, the sine is positive. Sine values are positive there. So sine of the half angle when you're in quad one is positive. So you're going to make that determination. And this is going to allow you to say, OK, when I, if I have a choice in this formula of plus or minus, that is based on what sign the sign of the half angle takes on. Okay, you had this choice of plus or minus and you wanted to know what should I choose for sign of the half angle and that's what we were determining right here. Sign of the half angle since you're in quad one uh, is positive. So we choose the plus sign. Okay, so we're going to go like this. We're choosing specifically that plus sign, and the formula goes like this. 1 minus cosine of this angle that's being cut in half um, divided by 2. And this picture that, you, that we drew to begin with represents theta. <clears throat> Okay, so when we go and start trying to plug in the values, all we need to plug into the formula that we have just chosen is cosine of theta. And cosine of theta is square root of 39 over 8. So plugging that into this formula right here, you're going to get, okay, we already made the decision about the plus sign. You're going to get 1 minus square root of 39 over 8 divided by all of this is happening inside the square root. You should make this have this this one have the same denominator as, as that. So we're going to call the 1 8 over 8. So we'll have 8 minus because the numerator for the 1 if we rename the number 1 8 over 8 it would be 8 over 8 minus square root of 39 over 8. So they would both have the same denominator. <clears throat> just by renaming the 1, 8 over 8. Okay, so now this is what your inside of your radical looks like. It would be 8 over 8 minus square root of 39 over 8. 
giving them both the same denominator, and then you're dividing by 2. When you divide by 2, that's the same thing as multiplying. <clears throat> Let me just move this over a little bit. That's the same thing as multiplying by 1 half. So you want to divide by 2? It's the same thing as doing this. We have been doing this a lot in our problem, so that's not there. It's been taken care of on the next uh, page. I'll continue with the algebra, but it would be 1 times all of this, 2 times 8 on the bottom <clears throat> would be 16. So let's continue that. So this is number 1c, so it would be sine of half angle, let me grab those values, that was 8 minus square root of 39, 8 minus square root of 39, many of these answers will have double radicals in them. And then there was a 16 on the bottom when we multiplied the 8 times the 2. Okay, so now we can go on. You cannot uh, simplify the numerator any further, so you're just, you're going to be reporting a double square root. 8 minus square root of 39 underneath <clears throat> the rat, the square root. You're also, you're not only taking square root of that, but you're also taking the square root of 16. So your answer in the end is double radical on the top, 8 minus square root of 39, and the 16 is actually a square root of it. Sometimes you're going to see them <clears throat> taking this coefficient, 1 fourth and just pulling it out like this and then just writing and you don't have to put the parentheses around the radical just writing it like this 8 minus square root of 39 <clears throat> okay so it can be written like this or it can be written like this either one Okay, so that's part C. Okay, moving to part D. I'm just checking these answers as we go along. There's so many steps. I'm going to be very careful about all this. Okay, so then one part D. Now I believe... In part D, you're being asked for um, cosine of a half angle. So cosine of a half angle is just instead of using 1 minus um, cosine of A, which is the formula that we used when we were doing sine of a half angle, so it's 1 plus cosine of A. Divided by 2. So the only difference that you're going to have here is this is going to be just like your sine of theta over 2. That formula was 1 minus cosine of A over 2. This is just going to be 1 plus cosine of A over 2. So when you go to do um, this problem you're going to get the same answer that you got here. The answer that you got here, like I said, um, there was a minus in this one. This one has a plus in it. So you could really just use the answer that you got from up, up above. You can go one fourth, and you've already gone through all this simplification. You got the 8 minus square root of 39 because that formula was underneath the radical. 
it was 1 minus cosine of a over 2. And so ours is just going to change to 8 plus square root of 39. Okay, so no need to do all that all over again. Okay, and this is the final answer for part D. Okay, moving to example two. Same thing. Basically, what you're you know getting a lot of practice of drawing the picture that's going to generate all the answers, getting good at picking the plus or the minus, all of those things. So in this particular problem now, you're going to spin between pi and 3 pi over 2. Okay, this is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And uh, your spinning arm should be between pi and 3 pi over 2. So that means it's going to be right here. Travel to the nearest x-axis. Close up that triangle. And then put the values on it that you were given in this problem. They, this says tan of theta. This will be our theta is 5 over 4. Tan's defined as y over x. And based on how this trig... Um, value is defined, that's how you know where to put these numbers. So you're going to put this on the vertical leg because the vertical leg is always y. Um, you're going to put any x value that they gave you. And this has to be negative because you're in a quadrant where y values are negative. So just because you're seeing just the plain positive 5 there, you have to think about the quadrant that this triangle has been drawn in. When you're in quadrant 3, x's are negative and so are y's. So that y is negative. Make sure you understand that. x's are negative here. But would that not give you, even with these negatives, wouldn't that give you the positive 5 fourths tan value that you see? If you did tan here, it would be negative 5 over negative 4, which would then turn into this. So you're seeing it after they've already canceled the negatives. So be careful because you need to um, understand those negatives are there so that you can use them in these calculations. So going to part A, we're going to do sine of 2 theta. I mean, we should probably complete the triangle before we go and do these. And then I guess we'll do sine of a double angle and all the rest of these. So let's just go ahead and get the missing value always and then we can start our work here. So using Pythagorean theorem, you would have hypotenuse squared, which is r. Don't have that value. Uh, but we do have leg squared plus the other leg squared. And that would just be 16 plus 25. So r squared is 41. And therefore, r, which is just us taking the square root of both sides, r is square root of 41. So we'll go ahead and put that there. <clears throat> now we can continue with uh, practicing with our double angle and half angle formulas. So here we go with that. Sine of a double angle. I'll write the formula for you each time. So sine of a double angle is 2 times sine of the angle, but in its undoubled form, times cosine of the angle in its undoubled form. So 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. Okay, then we're going to just go start plugging in values um, right from our picture. Okay, so this would be 2 times your sine value times your cosine value. Don't forget, this sine value is defined as y over r. Your cosine value that you need in this other parenthesis is defined as x over r. So make sure you're grabbing the right values. So y over r. The y is negative 5. The r is square root of 41. So negative 5 over square root of 41. Okay, then your cosine value is x over r. That's going to be negative 4 over square root of 41. 
Okay, and as we go and simplify this, we're now going to have, don't forget, the 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1, so it's part of the numerator value. So this is going to be uh, 2 times 5 is negative 10, negative 10 times 4 is 40. It doesn't matter what order you multiply them in. All right, so then on the bottom, we have square root of 41 times square root of 41 times 1. So this 41. And that is your final answer for sine of a double angle based on the parameters given in this problem. Okay, now moving on to part B. Okay, so part B, you're being asked to do cosine of a double angle. There are three choices when you're doing the double angle formulas. You can use this one if you want to. Use cosine, but then square it. Do sine, but then square it. Or you can use 1 minus 2 sine squared, or you can do 2 cosine squared minus 1. I believe I used this one um, last time. It doesn't matter which of these three you use. Um, I am going to use 1 minus 2 sine squared this time. So this is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So you just do sine of theta first, then square it, then multiply it by negative 2. Okay, so here we go doing that. We're going to go 1 minus 2. We're going to do the sine value, and then we're going to square it. Sine is defined as y over r. So y is negative 5 over square root of 41. Okay, when you square this, I would clean this up before putting anything in the calculator. Uh, it's negative 2. What you're getting in here, when you square, you're squaring the top. Negative 5 times negative 5, 25. You're squaring the bottom, which just turns it into... And uh, 41. Now you can put all of that in the calculator if you'd like the rest of it, if you don't want to mess with it any further. So I would at least do that just to cut down on what you have to enter. So it's 1 minus 2 times, and in parentheses, 25 divided by 41. Close that up, and instead of enter, hit math, enter, enter. And you get negative 9 over 41 for your cosine of a double angle value. Okay, moving on to part C, where we're looking for sine of a half angle. And again, we're going to have to make a choice for sine of a half angle on the plus or the minus, because that's one of these formulas where it's a square root, and then you need to choose either plus or minus here for those half angle formulas. So you're making choice here. One or the other, not both. It's not like the quadratic formula. Okay, so the reasoning that we went through, I'm going to go through that again each and every time we have to make a choice of that plus or minus. We started off being told that the domain in this problem, here it is right in the instructions, is between pi and 30 pi over 2. However, we're interested in where the half angle lies. So cut that angle in half, and therefore cut these in half. When you cut something in half, you're dividing by 2. So sometimes it's convenient to just write it like that. And when there's a fraction involved, instead of dividing by 2, just multiply by 1 half. The simpler way to look at it when there's fractions involved. So we cut the angle in half, we cut the pi in half. And we are now cutting this in half by multiplying by 1 half. So this would be 3 pi over 4. Now, I want you to think about where are you when you're between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4. I mean, think about that. This is pi over 2 right here. This is 1 pi, or in other words, 4 fourths. So if you're spinning between pi over 2 and 3 fourths, you have to be right in here. You have to be in quad 2 for this situation right here. We are trying to do sine of a half angle. So the sine in quad 2 would be positive. 
Sine of a half angle would be positive. The sine values are positive in that quadrant. So when we go to pick our formula, yes, we are picking that positive, and then we're writing the rest of the formula. So the rest of the formula for sine of half angle goes 1 minus cosine of the angle, but not in its half form anymore. By the time you're over on the right side of the formula, the expanded version, the angles are no longer doubled or halved at that point. Divided by 2. This is equivalent to finding the sine of a half angle. So we can find an exact value here. We already know we've chosen the plus sign. <clears throat> so this is going to be 1 minus cosine of theta. And the, the triangle that you drew at the beginning of the problem represents your triangle at theta with all the values. So the cosine would just be x over r. It would be negative 4 over square root of 41. Negative 4 over square root of 41. All of that divided by 2. Okay, so now we try to clean this up. So there's a couple of things that may stop you from rewriting it over and over again. You could do a little bit of the work right up in here instead of rewriting this whole thing each time. First of all, it would be beneficial for you if this was not a radical, maybe just a regular number, because you want this denominator to match this, and it's hard to rewrite that in terms of radical. So let's get turn this into just 41. We're going to multiply the top by square root of the bottom by square root of 41 as well as the top. So that this fraction will end up in the next step just being 4 times square root of 41 over 41. And if this denominator is 41, then you should be renaming this 1 that you see out front here, 41 over 41. You can rewrite the number 1 any way you want. You're going to always write it in a way so that this denominator matches this one, which is going to be 41. We also have this double negative to clean up. And this is the, all of that's divided by 2. So let's write a somewhat cleaner version of what we have right now. Instead of the 1, it's going to be 41 over 41. I'm not going to write that denominator yet. It's going to be 41 over 41 plus this, now that you've rationalized by multiplying bottom and top by square root of 41, this will now be 4 square roots of 41. both of these numbers over a denominator of 41 and then divided by 2 again. Just, you know, hot mess going on under there. So there's a lot of stuff. And we're going to continue to simplify. So we'll do that on the next page. We have 41 plus 4 square root of 41. Forty-one plus four square roots of forty-one, all on top of eighty-two. I believe it was. Okay, and that, let's just take a look at that again. And I'm doing an extra step right here. Uh, I may need to show you what I'm doing more clearly. Uh, you have two divisors here. In other words, a complex fraction. We keep practicing that. If this happens, the way you can turn this into just one fraction is, this says all of this divided by 2. Well, you can float that up to the top and do your division by 2 by just multiplying by 1 half. So that this wouldn't be here anymore. It would be up here, but as a reciprocal. And that's the same thing as dividing by 2, which would give you an 82 on the bottom here. 2 times 41 would be 82. 1 times 41 plus 4 squared to 41 would remain the same, but you'd have an 82 on the bottom. So that's what you see me writing on the next page. 41 plus 4 squared to 41, 82, and all of this is underneath a radical.
Okay, and that's as far as you can go. You actually can't go any further than that. Unless you uh, turn into decimal, and they don't want decimals. They've asked you in each problem for an exact answer. That means do not convert to a decimal. So leave it like that. You can't reduce. You can't reduce unless all three of these co coefficients reduce, and they don't. And there is no square root of 82 because you of 82, so you can't take that out. Sometimes we can take the denominator out, but not in this case. So this is final answer for 2, part C. Moving on now to the last part. And that was, I believe, cosine. Yeah, we needed cosine of a half angle. So cosine of a half angle. Let's look at those formulas again, just so we can decide how much or how little work we're going to do. When we did sine of a half angle in part C, we chose a sine, plus or minus, based on uh, where the half angle is, and we'll go over that again. And then underneath the radical, it was 1 minus cosine A over 2. Well, the one we're finding now, yes, we have to choose the plus or the minus again, but what's under the radical is just 1 plus cosine of A. So it's just gonna, this is just going to be the same answer as this, but with an opposite sign, but we will choose the plus or the minus. Okay, so, but as far as the contents underneath the radical, it will be the same as this one, only this term back here will have the opposite sign, just like you see they have the opposite sign in the formulas. Okay, so let's talk about that plus or minus. Again, we had made this discussion right here on the previous page that we were given that theta needed to be between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 to begin with. So then we went and figured out, well, if I cut everything in half so that I have half an angle, which is what most uh, what part C and part D is about, which is why we're considering this right here, um, we found out that the half angle is between pi over 2 and 3 fourths. That meant you're in quad, um, you're in quad 2. You were then left with having to find sine of a half angle. Well, the sine values in quad 2, and you're over here in quad 2, just like this picture shows right here, the sine values are positive. But cosine values, sine values are the y values. And y values in, over here between pi over 2 and 3 fourths, just like this says, they are um, positive. And that's why... Uh, I picked the positive value. However, when you're in quad 2, cosine values are negative. Cosine of a half angle would be negative. So for that particular problem that we're doing right now in part D, we're going to choose the negative sign that goes out in front of that radical. So going to that part now, this is going to be a negative, and instead of um, when we were doing sine of a half angle where it was 1 minus cosine of the angle, now it's 1 plus cosine of the angle divided by 2. But we already did all this, and we know that this formula is only different from sine of a half angle by way of a, it had a minus sign, this one has a plus sign. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the answer that I have here. I'm going to look at what was under the radical when I finished it and just switch that back term because that is this thing. In this formula, it's positive cosine A. In the last formula, in part C, it was minus cosine A. So this is your cosine A value. It's just going to have a different sign this time. And it will still be over 82, but we um, discussed that this time we need to choose the negative that goes out in front of the radical because cosine values, when you're between pi over 2 and 3 fourths pi, the co cosine values are negative, which is what this choice of a negative is about.
Okay, so 41 minus, you know, that was, oops, I didn't copy the 1. So it's 41 plus 4 square root of 41, so 41 minus 4 square root of 41 over 82. And that's parts A through D. Okay, then in example 3, in example 3 it says use the information given about angle theta. Uh, this time this one starts off with radicals. They tell you where they want you to spin to as they have each time. So first thing we're going to do is create our picture and complete it. Okay, I'll put that picture right above here. I don't have that much room. Okay, so let's see. We're going to spin between um, pi over 2 and pi. Here's pi over 2. And then pi is right here. So our spinning arm is between those two. And then let me move this out a little bit. And then come down to the x-axis just so my triangle's not so tiny. Okay, so the spinning arm becomes the hypotenuse. Then you go and attach the values they give you based on the definition of this trig function. Cosine is defined as x over r. The r can never be negative. So don't ever put the negative there. It's only these legs that represent x and y that can be negative. In this quadrant, y's are positive, x's are negative. So that x value, the negative belongs to it. Okay, then we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to find the one value that is missing. So it's always hypotenuse squared, so 3 squared is 9, is equal to leg squared plus other leg squared. Okay, so this is going to be y squared plus 3. So it's, um, when you square square root of 3, it's just 3, and the negative goes away as well because you can't square and get a negative. Okay, so now what you have is y squared. You're going to bring this over here, at which point it becomes negative 3. So it's y squared is equal to 6. Therefore, y has to be equal to square root of 6 because you would just take the square root here and the square root here at that point. Okay. Alrighty, so now moving to um, part A. Part A, we're going to do sine of a double angle. Same formula that we've used in numbers 1 and 2. It's just 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta. Our theta was our angle that caused us to spin into quadrant 2, so we'll just call this triangle, uh, the central angle inside the triangle theta. Okay, then we can go and grab our values now. It would be 2 times sine of theta times cosine of theta. Don't forget, we're doing y over r for sine of theta. x over r is how cosine of theta is defined. So in this very first parenthesis, um, sine of theta, it would be the y value that we just found. Square root of 6. over the r value. And then the cosine um, value would be x over r. Okay, plugging everything in and now multiplying everything. So now let's just practice our rules for working with radicals. Um, we're going to have 2 as the coefficient out front. On the top I'm talking about, I'm going to multiply 2 times square root of 6 times square root of 3. Since these are both the same kind of radicals, square roots, you can bring those radicands up underneath one single square root symbol and do the multiplication underneath there. That one negative that we have, let's just toss that out front. So don't forget about it. And 6 times 3 would be 18. 
And then on the bottom, what we have is, and we're still going to work on that square to 18. On the bottom, what we have, the denominator is 9. Okay, this 18, we can simplify it a little bit because 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2. So you have a the negative 2 that's already out there. Uh, this 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2, so you can take the square root of that 9 and it comes outside of the radical as its square root, which is 3. So we've already taken care of that 9. We were able to remove it from underneath the square root, but the 2 stays underneath there. We have this 9 out front. So then this is negative 6 over 9 times square root of 2. Then you can reduce that, and that would be 3 goes into the top twice, and 3 goes into the bottom three times. So that would be your answer for number three, part A. Okay, 41. Um, let's see if box stop this. Those were our final answers for part C and D. And this is our first answer for number three, part A. Okay. Okay, moving on to part B. Part B, you're doing cosine of a double angle. The cosine of a double angle, there's three different choices. Um, 2 cosine squared minus 1, 1 minus 2 sine squared of the angle, or you can go cosine squared minus sine squared. I'm going to use that one this time. So I'm just showing, demonstrating use of all of them. So it goes cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay, that really means do cosine of theta, but then squared, likewise on the sine value. So you'll put cosine here, really x over r, and you'll square it. Then you'll have the minus sign, and you'll do sine of theta right here. It needs to be that gigantic. And that'll just be y over r. Don't forget to square it. Okay, so um, our cosine value off of that picture that we created for this problem is um, square, negative square root of 3 over the r value. And our y over r is square root of 6 over the r value. We're just doing y over r and the r value is 3. Okay, squaring. Now we're going to square. So we're going to square the top, which just turns into negative square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is just 3. When we square the bottom, we get 9. We do the same thing over here. When we square this, we just get 6. And when we square the bottom, we get 9. So this is 3 minus 6, negative 3, ninths, or just negative 1 third. And that's your answer for Part B. Okay, moving on to part C, where we're finding half angles and having to reason through a choice of what to use in the formula. So I'll start that here, just to conserve space. Um, we're trying to do sine of a half angle, but wondering whether we should use the plus or the minus that's in front of that formula. We have to choose this or this. We already know we're going to go 1 minus cosine of theta um, divided by 2 right here. So the reasoning that I have been teaching you to go through in order to pick that plus or minus is to just start with the restrictions that they've given you in this problem. In other words, theta between pi over 2 and pi. Theta is in between pi over 2 and pi. And then think about how you create a half angle just by cutting in half. But if you do that to the middle term, you have to do that to all these terms. So here's cutting the pi in half. 
and here's cutting the pi over 4 in half. Just multiply it by 1 half. Okay, so you have the half angle being 1 times pi is pi in between pi over 2 and pi over 4. And if that be the case, if you're between pi over 2, pi over 4 and pi over 2, well, pi over 4 is in quadrant 1, and pi over 2 is up at 90 degrees. So when you are truly in between pi over 4 and pi over 2, that's pi over 2. It happens after you. Pi over 4 is only half of that. So if you're in between uh, pi over 4 and pi over 2, you're right in here. You're in quadrant 1. And when you're in quadrant 1, not only is the sine positive, but so is the cosine. So that sine of a half angle, that's going to be positive. And you can write the angle using theta. You can write A, whichever one you want. I'll just write theta just to be consistent. So that is going to be positive. So you'll choose the formula with the positive sign out front. This is what it means to be greater than zero positive. And also, your cosine of a half angle is also going to be positive because of where the half angle is between 1 fourth pi and 1 half pi, which is in, like I said, quad 1. So the reasoning that you have to go through when you are choosing the plus or minus. Okay, so here we go. This is the formula we'd be using. And then it just goes 1 minus cosine of that angle that's being cut in half, but now divided by 2. And then you just start plugging in from there. So we're going to take this to the next page and do 1 minus cosine of theta right off of the picture that we have created right up here. That cosine would be negative square root of 3, just x over r. Negative square root of 3 over 3. Sine of the half angle is equal to, don't forget, we chose a positive, and it's 1 minus, this is the value for cosine, negative square root of 3 over 3, then divided by 2. So here's the formula, 1 minus cosine of theta, which on the picture is negative square root of 3 over 3, and then divided by 2 goes the rest of the formula. Okay, from here we're going to continue cleaning up. This will be equal to, I'm not going to write the positive anymore, just wanted to stress it here, 1 plus uh, square root of 3 over 3. So we have this double negative that we could rewrite as a positive. And furthermore, this 1 can be written so that it has the same denominator as this, as 3 over 3. So it would be 3 over 3 plus square root of 3 over 3, because these double negatives are not here anymore. It gets replaced by a positive. So 3 over 3 plus square root of 3 over 3. They both have a denominator of 3, which is then going to get divided yet again by 2. So you can do that right in this step right here. You can take care of that double fraction situation by just taking this divisor of 2, loading it to the top, and flipping it over so that you're multiplying the reciprocal, which is the same thing as dividing by 2. So that's not there anymore. And what you have now, let's see if I have enough room to write this, this will be... Uh, 3 plus square root of 3 over 3 times 2, 6. And then you can't take the square root of 6, so no, that's not going to be removed. Okay, that's the final answer for number 3, part C. Moving to um, part D. So in part D, 
we should work off of what we have already done for part C. Cosine of a half of angle. We already talked about on the previous page how we would be choosing the plus sign again because with that reasoning we were between pi over 4 and pi over 2 where both sine and cosine are positive so we'd be pick the plus sign again. The only thing that's different between the half angle formula for cosine and sine is that instead of it being 1 minus cosine it's 1 plus cosine. So this situation right in here would be 1 um, plus, not minus, 1 plus, and then the cosine value. So you wouldn't have a double negative this time. You would just have one negative because the cosine value that you're plugging in is negative. Here, this negative was from the formula for sine of a half angle, <coughs> that extra minus. But the cosine of a half angle doesn't have a minus there. It has a plus there. So if I know that all these values are the same, I needn't go through all of that again. I'm just going to get this answer right here. Instead of with a plus sign in between these two terms, it'll have a minus sign because I've already gone through all the simplification. And that is your final answer for part D. Okay, moving on to part example four. Okay, in example four, now we start to have values rather than just the mention of a general theta. So here it'll be even easier to figure out um, whether to use the plus or minus in, in these half angle formula situations because we can tell where this angle is just from its original form, 22.5. We know what quadrant that's in. I would make sure that you are doing what we have been doing in all the sections up until this point, and that is never leaving the argument negative. So based on your knowledge of odd and even functions, this happens to be an odd function. Only cosine and secant are even functions. So this is an odd one, and anytime you have an odd function, a negative in the argument floats out to the front so that your argument is then positive. So this is equivalent to um, negative now out front is a coefficient rather than in the argument and we are evaluating the sine of 22.5 degrees pretty weird angle okay so obviously we don't have any knowledge of that but again all these formulas sum and difference formulas half angle formulas double angle formulas they're all so that you can relate the angle you're trying to evaluate right back to either a 30, 60, or 45 degree special right triangle. So first thing you need to ask yourself is, what do I need to cut in half? What angle can be cut in half so that we can use half angle formulas? You need to have an angle that you're cutting in half. What angle can be cut in half so that it equals 22.5. And you can simply find that just by doubling this number. Because if you double that number, you're going to get the angle that if you were to cut it in half, you'd be right back to 22.5. And that angle is 45. It's all going to relate to either 30, 60, or 45, or some angle that is related to 30, 60, or 45 by way of a reference angle, so that it equals 22.5 degrees. So this is equal to negative sine. Here's just another way of writing 22.5 degrees. It is the same thing as 45 degrees cut in half. Once you see that you're cutting um, an angle in half, you then have the right to use the half angle formulas. 
So we're taking 45 and we're cutting it in half. Okay, then what we have to do is go and grab the half angle formulas. And I'll just keep reviewing those with you. Okay, you got to choose plus or minus, but underneath the radical, it's 1 minus cosine of the angle that you just cut in half, which was 45 degrees. Which you're, so you're going to know that value exact, which what is what allows you to give exact values for your answers. So, and then divided by 2. Now, with respect to making the choice, you don't have to go through that severe reasoning that we went through when we didn't even know what theta was. Here we, you can see that um, your original angle... Your original angle is the half angle. The original angle you see right there is the half angle. And that half angle is in quad 1. And if it's in quad 1, then the sine of, a, you know, the half angle that you're looking for, if sine is positive, so here you're going to choose the so sine of the half angle, which is at 22.5, is positive. So if it's positive in that quadrant, then you're using that positive sign that's out in front of the point. So it's positive rather than negative. And then the formula goes 1 minus the cosine of the angle that you just cut in half, which is 45 degrees. And then instead of over 2, it's the whole thing's divided by 2, so that that 2 is not impacting the angle. Anymore. Okay, so this is going to be 1 minus, and if you don't remember what the cosine of 45 degrees is, here's a 45 degree triangle, both legs. The vertical leg, which is considered the sine, as well as the horizontal leg, which is considered the cosine, they're both squared at 2 over 2. So that's what you're plugging in for cosine of 45, square root of 2 over 2. And then it's once again divided by 2. So let's clean this up a bit. We're going to call this 2. 2 over 2, so that it has the same denominator as this, pull them into one fraction. So it would be 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. Both of them over 2, but then you're also dividing by that 2 once again that's on the bottom. So we got a double divisor here, and we alleviate that by just floating this divisor all the way down at the bottom up to the top and multiplying by the reciprocal of this divisor. So instead of dividing by 2 over 1, we multiply by 1 half. So this is 2 minus square root of 2 and now 2 times 2, this is no longer here, it's been floated to the top and we multiply that 2 by this one. That's a 4. Now that denominator you can actually take the square root of, but when it comes out of the square root, it comes out in the denominator because that's where it is underneath the radical. So when it comes out, it's still in the denominator. So take the square root, and you can write it like this if you want. It comes out of the radical. The only thing that's left inside the radical is 2 minus square root of 2. You can write it like that, or you can pull this coefficient 1 over 2 out like this if you'd like. And then just report this as the numerator. Up to you. Either one of those is the same thing. You can do it like this, or this. And now let me make sure that I picked up my negative. Okay, so I want to make sure and give that negative in my final answer. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning here. There was a negative inside the argument, and we brought it out to the front. 
So you might want to like as you're doing each step just so you don't forget it because it's super easy to forget before reporting your uh, final answer. We did choose from the plus or the minus options. We did choose plus, but don't forget there was this extra negative that was out here. That's this one. So all of these have to have that extra neg a negative followed by a plus is just a negative. So that gets a negative. Um, and you can put them in front of each step, but you know maybe you want to put like uh, brackets here so you remember to report it before giving your final answer. So all the way down. No, you do not have to circle it. You can just put it right there, but you do need to report that ne that negative in your final answer, or else just that one thing will mark it wrong. Okay, so two minus square root of two over two, but negative. Okay, moving on to example five. In example five, we take a look at the half angle formulas for tan. If you're being given the angle in pi form, you may be uh, more comfortable converting it into degrees, just because those will be easier um, for you to cut. Okay, so this is going to take a lot of simplifying, so. Don't fill the messenger, just the way these formulas are, they're a lot of work. Okay, so I would do this first. I would fish out this negative. This is also an odd function, and therefore taking the negative out of the argument makes it float to the top. So this is the same thing as negative tan, and I'm also going to convert this 5 pi over 8 into degrees. Pi is the same thing as 180 degrees. So that top says 5 times 180, which is 900, divided by 8. So 5 times 180 is 900, divided by 8 is 112.5. 112.5 degrees. That's what we're trying to find the tan of. Now, we once again, just like in the last problem, you do have a negative tan value. So we're going to maybe hold that on the outside, maybe use a pair of brackets to, so we don't lose that negative as we're doing the multiple steps that it takes to get to this answer. Okay, so negative tan of 112. 0.5 degrees. First thing that we're going to try and figure out is what should I cut in half? And I'm going to go like this. Go negative tan. And remember I'm, I was telling you that if you want to know what to cut in half, just double this. When you double this, you get 225. So 225. Now I know that this is not 30 or 60 or 45. It's not a special right triangle, but it's related to one. When you spin to 225, you're going to be 45 degrees past the uh, 180 mark. 180 plus 45, so you are going to be in a 45 degree triangle. Everything you do by way of these double angle and half angle formulas, and some in different formulas, will relate back to either 30, 60, or 45 or some cousin to the 30, 60, or 45 degree angle so that you're always working inside of a special right triangle. So that's what we're going to be trying to do. Then we have to apply the formula. So the formula, notice that just like the cosine double angle formulas where you had several options, you had three options for cosine of a double angle, well, tangent of a half angle is like that as well. If I was you, just so you can't make a mistake just on picking the plus or minus, I would choose one that doesn't have the radical or the choice to be made on plus or minus. You might find that easier. So it's up to you which one of these you want to use. I'm going to use um, this one right here. One minus cos, not for any particular reason. They're, they both have a ton of steps. So 1 minus cosine of the angle you're cutting in half, which will be this, was 225, uh, over sine of that angle. Same angle used here and here. Okay, this is going to be equal to, don't forget that extra negative. And then it's going to be 
1 minus cosine of the angle you're cutting in half over the sine of the angle you're cutting in half. That's the formula that I am using. And once again, that's this one right here. No choice of a plus or minus, just a fraction. 1 minus cosine of the angle you're cutting in half and then sine of the angle that you're cutting in half. That extra negative is because the argument was negative and we needed to float it out to the front. Okay, so cosine of 225, we need that and we need the sine also. They're going to be the same radical, just different signs. Okay, so if I spun to 225, well, here's me at 180. And then if I want to get to 225, I have to go an additional 45. That additional 45 is my reference angle right at the origin. It's my central angle that makes me be inside a right triangle. So I'm inside a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90, and the legs are always square to 2 over 2. This plays the role of the sine, the vertical leg, which is the y value, and this plays the role of the cosine. In the quadrant that you're in, x's as well as y's are negative, and the cosine is the x. The, y, the sine is the y, so they both are negative. We're going to have a lot of negatives floating around in here. Okay, let's continue to plug in. Okay, we're going to come over here and continue plugging in. So don't forget that negative. So we're going to do all this inside. So it's 1 minus. Now instead of cosine of 225, we will replace this entire expression with what it is equal to off this triangle. The cosine value is negative square root of 2 over 2. Negative square root of 2 over 2. The minus sign came from the formula, and then I have another negative on top of that. Sine of 225 is this value. It is also negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, let's continue cleaning this up. We can call this a positive. Throw out that double negative, replace it with a positive, and call this one, the number 1 right here, call it 2 over 2. You want it to be rewritten as a fraction with the same denominator as this, so you can pull this term and this term together into one fraction. So instead of 1, we're going to write 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. Okay, 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. They both have a denominator of 2. That allows you to pull the top together. Now, let's not forget that negative because there's so much to do here. Very easy to forget that. So let's put that there. And then what was the bottom? Okay, all this was that you see right here, 2 plus square root of 2 over 2, that was just the top. We also had negative square root of 2 over 2 on the bottom. We have all of that going on. Okay, so let's keep going down here. Okay, so now at this point I have a double fraction, complex fraction as I've had in almost every problem, and I'm going to float this up here to the top, and I'm going to flip it over. So it's going to be, instead of square root of 2 over 2, 2 over square root of 2. Flipping something over does not get rid of the negative. So put the negative somewhere. Okay, so right now I'm just trying to um, simplify what's inside here. We still have that negative out there. This square root of 2 over 2 is no longer down at the bottom. It's up here at the top. This 2 cancels with this 2. And you have um, 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2. Okay, so that 2 cancels with that. And then we just had 2 plus square root of 2 over square root of 2. Okay, so now if you want to rationalize this, there's lots of algebra in here, you'd have to multiply the bottom by square root of 2, multiply the top 
by square root of 2. So you'd have to multiply all that by square root of 2 just to change this bottom into a regular 2, which they want you to do. Okay, so still working on what I have in here. So 2 times square root of 2 would be written like this. 2 square root of 2. And then square root of 2 times square root of 2 would just be 2. And then square root of 2 times square root of 2 would just be 2. Okay, continue. Now we're going to continue to reduce. We're almost there. 2 goes into each one of these coefficients. So let's leave the negative there. Let's not go crazy yet. So it's 2 square root of 2 over 2. And 2 over 2. So this is equal to square root of 2 plus 1. And then finally, when you apply that negative, it's just um, negative square root of 2 minus 1. This is, now let me check these signs here. Let me go back and go over my work a little bit. So this was um, tan of uh, five, negative 5 pi over 8. We took the negative out there. This was 112. Then we had the negative here. Then this was tan of 225. I want to make sure that I have all of this right. Give me one minute. Okay, so this was um, 1 minus cosine of 225 over sine of 225, which was um, 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 with a negative down there and the negative still out front. Then we were flipping over the bottom so that that was negative 2 over square root of 2. And let's see what we had at that point. And I think I dropped the negative here. I just need, need to check this out. Hold on. Okay, so yes, there is an issue here. So we brought this up here, which was 2 over square root of 2. And those canceled, but the negative was still there. OK, so okay, right here, these 2's canceled out. But then I should have distributed the negative to this as well as this. So let me fix those negatives here, because I knew there was a negative problem here. So this should have been, just fix this in your notes, please. This should have been a negative here as well as a negative here. Okay, so likewise right here, this should have been negative, negative. Excuse me on that. And then this should have been negative, negative. And then this should have been negative, negative. Then finally, on my very last step, because um, there was a lot of negatives here, there was this one that was being distributed from the back, and I neglected to distribute that negative at that time when I was canceling. I just canceled the twos, but um, didn't distribute this negative. So that is why I'm fixing these signs. So that would be negative 2, negative, 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 still negative, negative. And then finally, I did this as my very last step. I distributed the negative from the front, and that turns out to be positive, positive. 
So just be careful. Check out your answers like I'm doing at the end because it's super easy to drop one of those negatives because there's so many of them floating around. So that is the final answer there. Square root of 2 plus 1. Okay, making some headway here. So now we are going on to example 6. And in this example, uh, we're doing cosine of 67.5 degrees. So this angle right here, we know that this is in quad 1. This is already the half angle. So this is in quad 1 and cosine is positive in that quad. Everything is positive in that quad. Being greater than zero just means you're positive. So when I go to pick the formula for cosine of 67.5, this half angle that we're working with, I'm going to pick the positive sign. So cosine of 67.5 is equal to cosine of 135 degrees divided by 2. That's the angle that we're cutting in half, and there that, therefore that 135 is, is going to be what appears throughout the radical. Um, and we'll be building our triangle based on a rotation to 135, which is related to 45 degree reference angle. So we will be in a special right triangle. So now um, expanding this half angle using the half angle formula for cosine. I said I'm going to choose the positive that goes in front of the radical, and what's underneath the radical is 1 plus cosine of the angle that you're cutting in half divided by 2. Okay, then if I do a rotation to 135, that would be right here, stopping before I get to 180, but you need to figure out how much before you get to 180. Well, if you're going to 135, the difference between 135 and 180 is 45. Therefore, you are in a 45 degree triangle with your cosine being square root of 2 over 2 negative and your sine value being square root of 2 over 2 positive. Okay? Horizontal leg is always cosine, vertical leg is sine, just so you don't get the two mixed up. Okay, now coming here and plugging in, you have 1 plus cosine of 135 is based off of this picture where I rotated to 135. My cosine value was negative square root of 2 over 2, divided by 2 yet again. You may want to rewrite this as 2 over 2 rather than 1, so it would be 2 over 2. A plus followed by a minus is just a minus, so it would be 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. So my next step, 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2. And then there's another divisor of 2. So like in all these problems, you have these complex fractions. They're alleviated by floating the divisor up to the top and just multiplying by the reciprocal, so that it all becomes part of one fraction. And that leaves you with 2 minus square root of 2, because you're doing 1 times all of this, and then 2 times 2, 4. Okay, it just so happens that this denominator you can take the square root of it, but it doesn't come out as 2. It comes out as 1 over 2. So 1 over 2, and then find the radical. Okay, so I took that out. The root is right there. Square root of 4 is 2, the in the denominator. And then all you'd have left here would be that numerator. And that's all that's left underneath the radical. Okay, 2 minus square root of 2 underneath the square root of 2 with 1 half being pulled out in the radical. Example 7.
So in example seven, same situation. We're really, you know, kicking our butts with these negatives. So this is also an odd function. And therefore, we're going to have an extra negative that we have to carry with us as we do the problem. So it's negative sine. You might also want to uh, figure out what this is as a degree type number. So it's 5 times 180 divided by 12. So 5 times 180 So 75. 5 times 180 is 900 divided by 12 is 75. So we're doing it for 75 degrees. That's the same thing as 5 pi divided by 12. It'll just be easier to figure out what to cut in half. Because they want you to use the half angle formula. That negative has come out front as a coefficient, so we want to remember to keep it in the mix. Okay, so the formula for sine of a half angle, this is what we're going to be cutting in half. We're going to be doing sine of 150, which is related to a 30 degree reference angle, so we'll still be inside a special right triangle. 150 divided by 2 is what um, we're working with here in this particular formula. That's what would create a 75 degree angle. So every time I mention an angle inside the formula, it'll be the angle that we're cutting in half, the 150. So that formula for half angle sign, um, we have to pick a sign out in front of the radical. This minus that you see outside the brackets is just um, that extra negative that we have. So let's see. When you are at 75, you're in quad 1. And when you're in quad 1, the sine val values are positive. Your half angle is going to take on that positive sign. So I'll just put that there just so you understand that we were thinking about what to use here, and we made the decision of the positive rather than the negative. This just happened to be an extra negative that was in the problem. Then the half angle formula for sine goes 1 minus cosine of the angle that you're cutting in half, which is the 150. It has to be something that's related to 30, 60, or 90, so you can't get confused and think that you're going to put the 75 here. That is not related to 30, 60, or 45 if you rotate to it. So you're purposely using angles related to special right triangles, and then it's divided by 2. Okay, that's the whole formula. Now we're going to actually start plugging in values. At 150, you'd be right here, stopping 30 degrees before you got to this 180 mark. And that 30 degrees that you stopped, when you stopped at 150, that 30 degrees that you stopped before you got here is the reference angle. And that reference angle gives us the value along this side, which represents the sine, the vertical leg. And it also gives us the cosine, which would have to be square root of 3 over 2. Because the 60 degree angle would be up here, always across from 60 is the long way. It does happen to be negative. Because in this quad, x's are negative, and the horizontal leg is like the x, and y's are positive. Okay, we only need the cosine value. So, once again, we're going to have a bunch of negatives floating around here. Got to try and keep our heads straight on that. Hey, I'm not going to write this plus anymore. So, we're going to have 1 minus the cosine. The cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. Everything that's at the top, 1 minus the cosine is now, yet again, divided by 2. All that happening underneath the radical. So I'm going to do two things. Clean up the double negative as I have in many cases and I'm going to call this 1 2 over 2 because that would give it the same denominator as this so that I could pull those two uh, terms together into one fraction which I'm going to do right now. Okay, so there's the extra negative out front and then underneath this radical is 2 over 2 plus 
So that double negative is gone. Square root of 3 over 6. Let's just give it one big common denominator. We don't have to write it again just because we wrote it as two separate fractions. Okay, so we have all of this pulled together as one single fraction, but it's divided by two again. And then we keep working on how to alleviate this complex fraction routine here. So we just said that what we do, instead of dividing by two, we multiply by one half. And it's the same thing as dividing by two, so that two is no longer there. It's up at the top. And so what we have now is one times two plus square root of three over bottom times bottom four. Okay, and then you can take the square root of 2, but since that's, this, you can take the square root of 4, which is 2, but since that 4 is in the denominator, when you take it out as the square root, the square root's in the denominator. So this would be 1 half, this 2 is the square root of 4, down in the, reported down in the denominator, and then that's well, not in there anymore, it came out. And then what's still left underneath the radical is 2 plus square root of 3. And then at that point, apply the negative. Negative down to half. And I just want to keep mentioning that you can report the coefficient out front like this, or you can write it like this. 2 plus square root of 3 underneath the square root symbol, just over 2. This is the same thing. The same thing as pulling the 1 half out front, and you've got to report that negative. So either one. Give this one if you want. Or that one. They won't care which one you give them in the software that you're using. Okay, so that's example 7. So all of that has been an extensive demonstration of how to use half angle, double angle uh, for all three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, now we get to a couple of different problems, dragging you back into the skills that we learned in section 7.3, I believe it was, which was how to solve trig equations. So one of the things that you can do with a trig equation, I think there was one or two examples like this back in 7.3, is that if you see you have two different trig words, you're going to want to bring that equation to a point where it's all the same trig word to make the solving process easier. So what you could do here is there are several ways that cosine of a double angle is defined use the one that has nothing but the word sine in it so that this equation will have nothing but sine in it. So one of the definitions for cosine of a double angle is the following. 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. That is equivalent to cosine of a double angle. Then we have this other term, 8 sine squared theta. And we have an equal sign and a 4. So I have replaced cosine of a double angle with its equivalent. You can substitute one thing for another when they are equal to each other, as your formula page told you, first page. Okay, now we can collect like terms. On our sine squared term, we have negative 2 sine squared plus 8 sine squared. That's 6 sine squared when you combine their coefficients. We have positive 1 over here, and we have a constant over here. So you can combine this constant with the 1 on the other side. Just bring it to the other side. It will then become a negative 1 and no longer be here. And you'll have a 3. So our equation is starting to get nice and tidy. We're going to solve for the unknown, which happens to be in the quadratic form, second degree form, by dividing off that 6 here as well as here. That leaves you with 
sine squared equal to one half. If you're going to get the answers for this, you need to take the square root, bringing it down to first degree, likewise on the other side, but reporting both the positive and negative root whenever you're using the square root method as your solving method. You must report the positive and negative root on the numeric side. You don't have to factor because you don't have a linear term. You have a second degree term and a constant. That's when you can take the square root of both sides. Okay, so this square root dissolves the square and out comes sine of theta. On this side, you're looking for any angle that is associated with a sine value of either positive or negative. Let's simplify this. This is square to the top, square to the top, which would be square to one, is just one. Square to the bottom looks like that, and you might recognize it a little bit better if I rationalize it. If I multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 2, it's plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. So what kind of triangle has a sine value that's either positive square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over, negative square root of two, over 2? It would be the 45 degree triangles. So let's see, all the places that we would actually have a solution. Okay, if you're right here inside a 45 degree triangle, okay, that's pi over 4, then this would have a sine value of positive square root of 2 over 2. If you're in this quadrant with a 45 degree, degree angle. You still have a sine value of positive square root of 2 over 2. If you're in this quadrant with a reference angle of pi over 4, as long as that reference angle is 45 degrees, you're going to have a square root of 2 value, a square root of 2 over 2 value on your vertical leg. And you're allowed for it to either be positive or negative. So this is good, this is good, this is good, and this situation would be good. And all of these are right triangles. See, here you'd have um, another pi of 4. Just keeping that reference angle the same will get you that um, y value that we seek, which can either be plus or minus square root of 2 over 2. So now, don't forget, from that section, what you're really looking for when you solve a trigonometric equation is you want to know where this rotated arm is. In other words, the hypotenuse of each triangle. Those are going to be your final answers. They are the thetas, the angles that when you plug it in here and here, you would actually get a 4. Okay, so let's see. We have a reference angle of pi over 4, therefore this has to be pi over 4. Try to remember, in quad 1, the final theta and your reference angle are always equal. But that is not true in quadrants 2, 3, or 4. If you're rotating from 0 degrees and you're trying to get here, so you rotated as far as this, but you stopped one-fourth before you got to this landmark called pi, which is the same thing as four-fourths. You were rotating almost there, but stopped one-fourth before you got to four-fourths. So this has to be three-fourths of a pi. When you're in quadrant four, that means you're rotating to four-fourths, and then going an extra fourth. Going to four fourths would be right there, and then going an extra fourth. You're passing through that angle, which is the reference angle. And so now you're at five fourths. Three answers so far. We have one in each quadrant. Then here you're rotate, you're continuing that rotation, almost making it back to two pi, which is also called eight fourths. 8 fourths is the same thing as 2 pi. So you're on your way back to 2 pi, but you stop 1 fourth 
before getting there. This arm is never quite made it to eight fourths. It stopped one fourth before you got to eight fourths. So this is called seven fourths. And those are your four solutions. And those are the four solutions for that problem and the drawing that goes with it. Okay, last problem I believe this is, example nine. Um, use radicals and fractions. Well, that's been the answer. That's going to be, the, the, that's it has been the instructions for all of them because they want exact answers, not decimal answers. So this one, you're going back to section 7.1 where you are learning about inverses and the fact that inverses are angles. So you're going to always work these composite functions. Uh, composite means um, what you're evaluating at is just another function. So it's a function substituted into another function. Work it from the inside out. So you're going to do this first. So right now what you want to do is you want to figure out just what is the inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2? We can multiply it by 2 later. Right now, I just want to know, what is this value equal to? It's some kind of angle. So inverse of square root of 2 over 2, first establish that you realize it's an angle, not another kind of value. And then you can take it out of inverse form. Maybe you remember, hopefully you remember doing this where you just switch these two. Put this on this side and the square root of 2 will take the place of the theta. And now you're in the, your non-inverse form. When you read this, this says cosine of what angle is square root of 2 over 2? That's the 45 degree uh, triangle. So the theta here is 45 degrees. You can only get a, cosine, a positive cosine value. And you know what? We need to remember some things here. We could get a positive cosine value of square root of 2 over 2. for four, In quadrant 1, those have positive cosine values, and also in quadrant 4. But do you remember that there are restrictions whenever you are doing in finding inverse cosine values. For inverse cosine values, these were the restrictions you were to memorize. Inverse cosine values are restricted to quadrant one and quadrant two, anything from here to here. So if you're looking to get um, positive cosine values, you want to get positive cosine values like what you see right here, that can only happen here, not here. Therefore, you may not be anywhere other than quadrant one. You are restricted to quad one if you want to get a positive cosine value, yet obey the restrictions. <coughs> okay, so right here at 45 degrees, in other words, if you had a reference angle of 45 degrees, yes, you would get a sine value square root of 2 over 2, and you'd also have a cosine value square root of 2 over 2. So that's perfect. <clears throat> okay, so you can leave this in degrees or <clears throat> pi form. So the um, angle that this is equal to is 45 degrees. I want you to take that 45 degrees, bring it back over here to the problem. It is what this is equal to. So there was an extra 2 in there. This cosine of inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2 turned out to be 45 degrees. Leave it in pi form if you want. 2 times 45 degrees is 90 degrees. <coughs> so you want to know at 90 degrees. <coughs> Sorry, losing my voice. What's the sine value? So 
so the sign value is 1. Okay, and that completes section 7.6.